A little quick video, just an update on it. Got some parts cut, and the way it works is it is that I can only cut certain dimensions right now, and then I have to find out just how wide these laminated fall walls are before I can cut other parts to their final size. So I cut everything just slightly oversized that I don't know about, and so here's basically this the the exterior except for the uh, you know the exterior, and here's the quarter. For that. Okay. And then now what I got to do is I got to lay out parts to cut on my bandsaw and uh, using the sliding fence. And so I got to mark these every three quarter. So I end up with uh, about 30, 30, 32 of them. That's what I calculated it would work out to about 30 of those pieces. And I'll need about 30 of these little pieces. Before I cut these though, uh, we talked about making the flow of the fall less regular because it's extremely predictable you know they're all of these are exactly the same height so the water just goes over them falls down so uh, the artist had put some stones and stuff in front of them to try and make the flow more interesting because I guess it was just a little less than you know it could be in terms of visual excitement so I thought okay I know how we can do this so these pieces are going to turn into these pieces okay so what would change the flow characteristics is if I could alter this surface this way, but also this way. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, just sort of make a gentle wave, maybe between a sixteenth and an eighth or so, along in here, on all these pieces. And then I'm going to come over here to my sander, I'm going to blast it uh, with the sander along the edge, just randomly carving again you know up to about an eighth or so of an angle on the sides and then when I cut these all into little half inch pieces and I laminate them into place there'll be irregularities to the surface so I'm not going to try to go too crazy I don't want it to look like a snaggle tooth you know type of thing but for the where the water these would all be nice and regular but where the water is actually flowing over they would be up and down and front to back a little bit and maybe create some turbulence and some action there that might not otherwise uh, occur if they were just smooth and flat on the top. All right, I'll show you some uh, assembly stuff and we'll So I got them irregular in this direction. Now I want to make them irregular in this direction. all the dust off of these and then I'll be I want to leave the rough texture to them so after I've got all the dust off of them then I'll apply acrylic solvent all the way along it which will make it a little bit shinier and then I will uh, buff it out and I'll do the same to the back so the back I'll actually sand 
and buff in a normal way. But I don't want to sand out all the texture because these will be the, the tops. And so the, the liquid will have to flow around these edges and over everything and it'll kind of make it all gnarly. That's the purpose of that anyway. So to get all the little whites out of those grooves without sanding it, using a stainless steel wire brush, same brush I use for cleaning my files. And that'll get most of it out of there. Very unconventional way to dress an acrylic edge, but you know, we're making a piece of art here. And uh, it just felt too digital, too static. And it needs to be more analog, rougher, and just gnarlier and more visually appealing when it starts flowing. You won't even really notice these that much because they'll be trapped in between all these regular pieces. So you're not really going to see them except for what they do to the water. Okay, and the next step to this rather unconventional edge preparation. Okay, here's one that's been prepared. Okay, and here's one that's still rough. And I'll just show you how this goes. Kind of sounds like a TIG torch crackling along at about 20 amps. I like it. And we're done. Okay, let that dry. Then I'm going to sand the backs and polish them up. And then I'll be ready to chop them up. All right, here we are in the sanding buffing zone. And I wanted to show you a couple pieces side by side, back to back, so you can really see. This one's been sanded and buffed, and then this has had the solvent and buffed, and you can see the difference from every angle that that makes. I'm just going to show you real quick the process because it goes really fast because unlike you know, something that's going to be on the outside of the reservoir. This is actually the underside of the far wall. And the only reason that I'm buffing it is to make it a little more transparent. So I'm not going the full nine. I'm just giving it about six. What I'm doing is I'm getting my bad saw marks off with 220. You know? And consider that not every single one of these pieces is going to be used. I'm just going to use ones that I want to use, where I want to use them. And then I'm going to take a piece of 320, do the same thing. That takes the scratches down from the 220. Got one little saw mark, not worried about it. And then I go to 400. And let's swing on over to the buffing wheel and I'll zoom in a little bit so you can see better. Okay. See what I'm doing over here. Okay. Buffing wheel. Special kind of rouge just for acrylic. Dress the wheel. Keep the piece moving. Apply medium pressure. Because this is never going to be seen, it's just got to be transparent. I'm not worried about removing every single scratch. The buffing wheel is removing a lot of the scratches and getting the surface damn near back to the way it's supposed to be. Now, 
you can see the clearness. I'll do the same thing for the front. Just get all that side chamfer edges that I've got with the sander. Run lightly across the irregular surface there. Do the same on this side. Just a little bit. I'm not going crazy. I don't want to remove all my marks. Just want to get it a little shinier. Pretty fast process because each little tiny part is barely visible. They're only going to be a half inch by three eighths laminated in between other pieces. Okay, and when we get them side by side, you can see that dust all over this one now. So now I got one more to go, and I'll have enough strips to start cutting. Of course, they got to be marked. So I just made tick marks at every half inch, taped the three pieces together, and that way I'll get my lines all the way across. And what I'll do is I'll split the line with the bandsaw, so I'll be able to cut these parts in one time. So I'll be cutting three parts every time I make a pass. I actually only need 30 parts. But I'm going to make a bunch extra so that I can sort out the ones that I want, kind of find the, the layout that I want. Because the parts are irregular, I'm not really sure if this is going to work because they may flex as I'm cutting them and I could end up ruining some pieces. So I'll just make a few test cuts. <laughs> these pieces are pretty much the same this way. Or if I'm going to get a lot of variation. Yep, some variation, definitely. These are, this one's small, this one's small, these are the same. So I'm not really sure if that's going to work because there's so much space in between them that I'm feeling it. I don't know if you can see the tape moving, but it's flexing. And it's, even though it's a pain in the ass to cut them one at a time off a strip and do it, make everything three times longer, having a bunch of parts that may not be right is it's just what you have to weigh up. It's pretty, it's pretty close. I would say that that's way less than a sixty-fourth. You know, so I don't even know if it'll make that much of a difference. But yeah, that looks pretty cool. That's going to look awesome to see how the three are stacked and how they have all those different heights to them. Hoping that the light isn't totally blowing it out. Alright, anyway. Let's see if I can get a few more out of it and I'll test a few more and see if they come out the way I like. You see I have a mess of parts now. They're held together with uh, chemical resistant 3M tape. Don't have to worry about the solvent doing anything too crazy to them, and this will really facilitate me treating all these edges because there's a lot of them. And this is the same deal. This saw mark that the bandsaw left is desirable. It's what I want. It's a nice surface texture. It's going to look awesome. What I'm trying to do is get it across the face without getting it down the sides. So, a little tedious, but you can see I put it on a piece of typing paper, and that's a great thing to do when you're working with acrylic. You don't want to put it on a piece of colored paper or on a dirty workbench or whatever. So get a nice clean piece of typing paper, put your piece on it. So if a little solvent gets under it, no big deal. And we'll flip them over and do the, uh, the same thing to the other side. So it's not like that's not going to get solvent on it too. But uh, this is way, way, way more pieces than I need. Only need 30 pieces, so I've got maybe half again as many as I need. That way, I, if there's any that are particularly wide or whatever, or crooked or anything that I don't like about them, or they just don't have enough surface variation on the top or whatever it is, I can deselect them and just work with the ones that I want. 
Then I got to do the same kind of operation for all the big pieces that go beside them. These are half inch, those will be three quarter. Same deal, cut out a whole mess of three quarter strips this time. Instead of out of a one inch strip, I'll cut it out of an inch and a half strip. So they will be a quarter inch taller above and below. Just like in my drawing. My drawing. Right on. Okay, right, this is when I would like to get my kids employed down here in the shop because I got to like. <laughs> 120 or something. I don't know how many of these damn things to pull. 120, 150 little things to peel off. Each little jewel here that I've created. This is when the job starts to slow down. It's doing pretty good there. Blazing along, sanding, puff, polishing, cutting on the bandsaw, and then once you've created that little individual jewel like this, which is nice and shiny all the way around, very, very nice. You gotta get a whole big stack of them. And then I gotta peel the other ones too. And then I gotta combine them. And I gotta lay out something that looks good to me. And then I gotta check the width on it. See if it'll work for my unit. Adjust it. Figure out how I wanna center it. Etc. and so on. I'm not gonna bore you by doing this. You guys will fall asleep watching this. But yeah. Just another part of the job. I got all the tedious paper peeling done, and uh, in a truly random druidic manner, I just drew the bones, cast them as they, they came up. So you can see that they're all up a quarter inch. That's what the wall will look like when it's done, laminated. And you can see the irregularities of each of the little pieces will affect the flow. And then I've got the pieces sort of arranged here. They're not spaced up, but just to show again. Nice irregularities. Now you notice that the faces are frosted and that's because they still need to get dressed. They need to get cut down. Plus I can get it to all the exterior sides of the big piece can I get it the little piece which is why I dress them ahead of time alright so I think that's going to wrap it up for this video I didn't want to make it super long there's a lot involved in getting these to glue up properly so that's going to be time consuming and whatnot and I'm probably not going to want to be stopping to start the camera and do all that sort of thing but I will uh, do what I can to show you more of the interesting building process of this art piece. Thanks for watching guys. Thanks for supporting Mountain Stars with your views, likes, and subscriptions. And of course, custom commissioned work.